I guess I just really like this method. It's faster for me. And uh, like you see how fast I did this. Hello everyone! Welcome to Art Business with Ness. I'm Ness and I'm a children's book illustrator. In this week's video, I'm going to walk you through the entire process of creating an illustration in my style in Photoshop. This showcase was recently recorded in a Zoom meeting with some of my wonderful artist friends. I really want to thank Brayden Hallett who organized and recorded these meetings. There are a few other showcases like this that were held with the same group of friends and all of these showcases are very interesting. So I will leave the link to that playlist in the description if you're interested in seeing the others. My showcase was about an hour long and in it I talk about my process of simplifying shapes to create my exaggerated and cute style. I also demonstrate how I create the clean color version using Photoshop vector tools as well as textures. This method is working as personally really worked well for me. Uh, it's a style that's quite unique and really fast to do for me. And it's also very cute and works really well for young markets such as baby books and board books. So if you're interested in learning how to create illustrations like this in Photoshop, keep watching, this is a video for you. Right before we jump into it, if you are as passionate about illustration as I am, make sure to subscribe to this channel to see more videos like this. Also click the little bell that sends you a notification whenever I upload a new video so you're sure that you won't miss any of the advice. So let's get started. Welcome to the third informal student showcase. So Vanessa, take it away, I suppose. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, for screen share. Oh, look. Is this working? Okay. Oh yeah, that works great. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yep. Yay. Awesome possum. Okay. Right, and I have my notes here on my second monitor. Okay, it looks good. <laughs> oh, beautiful. All right, so uh, I'm gonna be demonstrating in Photoshop, uh, my favorite program, and we're gonna do a simple character design from a photo. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I go from like reality to my very stylized uh, style. Awesome. And um, yeah, I hope that's interesting. <laughs> um, so my style was a very, very long journey to get to where it is now. Um, realism actually comes easiest to me. It's like my strongest uh, natural affinity, but it's never how I wanted to draw. I've always been really interested in like picture book, book styles and very stylized, but it seemed to be like black magic to me how people made that happen. <laughs> It just seems so much easier uh, to me to like turn off my brain and just observe and copy one to one the reality. When you want to stylize something, you have to do like additional steps of codifying what you see, simplifying it, exaggerating, and there's a, a whole process that involves more creativity and more thinking. So I'm gonna try to show you um, what is my thinking when I when I do that. And awesome. uh, yeah, it's the first thing that popped to my mind to do because when I was in school, I was so wishing that someone would do this for me. <laughs> <laughs> no one would explain how that worked. I, I even had a class um, in my animation program that was called Simplification for Animation. And I was so looking forward to that. I thought I was going to learn all of the secrets. But it just turned out to be a series of assignments where they will tell us, okay, here's a photo, simplify it. Oh, God. <laughs> I was like, okay, but how? You have a technique? Do you have tips? Anything? Please teach me. Please, but, uh, yeah, but no tips were forthcoming. <laughs> the delights of school. All right, then. Yeah. No, the horrors of school. The horrors of school. <laughs> uh, my program was actually really, really good, but this one class was a, a crushing disappointment. But, you know, I, I figured it out at some point. As I'm sure all of you had, you all have wonderful styles. Um, all right, so I always thought that um, when you have a very stylized style like this, that the artist, that was what they were picturing in their minds to begin with. Mm -hmm. Like this lion, for example, that it would be for the farm like this in my mind, and I would just put it down on paper, like my world in my mind looks like this. But that's not exactly how it works. I... I prepared some photos. So when we think of a cat, this pops into our minds, right? Yeah. So when we want to make it into something like this, 
there are a lot of additional steps in the middle to, to make that happen. And so, uh, and there's no right or wrong, really. It's just about what we're trying to achieve, what we're trying to express. So we have to decide what do we keep and what has to go and what do we want to exaggerate and what do we want to minimize? So I, um, I got this little guy from uh, pexels.com uh, oh. that has some uh, copyright free photos so we don't get into trouble. <laughs> And, thank you, uh, thank I'm, you. Yeah, so I'm going to show you um, how we do a character design based on this photo. I'm going to use the same pose and everything. And uh, I'm going to try to explain every decision uh, that I make to, to simplify this guy. I think I'm going to even draw on the, the photo itself, though usually I don't do that. Sure, no, that'll be awesome. Okay, so with my style, most of the time, my main goal is uh, cuteness, right? <laughs> I try to make it as adorable as I possibly can. So I try to, um, when I codify uh, my reference photo, uh, I try to emphasize cuteness as much as possible. Uh, usually that means I try to make it, oh God, this is lagging. Okay, no, it works, all right. <laughs> so I try to make it look younger, uh, happier, uh, rounder. This guy okay. is already very round, so I purposely took a photo that I wasn't going to have too much to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're but looking for like keywords, I guess, to express is what you're saying. Yeah. Awesome. Exactly. So that's going to help me decide, uh, you know, what I keep and what has to go. When you know what you're trying to do, that helps. So uh, the first nice. thing that I would do is start with a very big brush because I want to identify the main shapes. So using a big brush, uh, I don't get lost in all of the details. I'm just going to identify the main shapes. So there's this big round shape here and something that looks like this and the head here. Then it'll look like this. And then it's so already it's pretty simplified. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Right? When we just yeah. go about with the, the big big shapes. So do you ever like exaggerate at this point? Like go like oh, yeah, I want absolutely. this central that's, shape to be bigger yeah. and that's okay. what I'm gonna show you. Uh, oh sorry. <laughs> when <laughs> Oops. So when trying to uh, make it look younger, uh, one of the big things is uh, making the head bigger. So maybe I would make this, this head more exaggerated. And what I'm seeing here is the, the big line here, right? I think that could be all one line. It, the, okay. it doesn't need to be like this little here. I don't think that's very much needed. I would probably make that into one shape, right? So I would simplify this like that. And then the, the wing, I would probably tuck it in. Maybe I would do something like this. I'm lagging a little bit. Are you guys? Uh... No, you seem fine to us. I don't think we're going to see it on our end because we're like by the time it gets to us, it's it looks pretty fluid. Yeah, right. I think you'll be fine. It's just your computer may not like running Zoom at the same time as Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, I have a little bit of a lag between my, my brush strokes when it actually appears on screen. Oh, Ooh, well. Dear. Oh, you mean like a lag, like a lag between you stroking and it appearing on Zoom or like on you actually screen. have brush lag? Yeah, brush lag oh, on dear. my Photoshop. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah, I bet it looks way better for us than for you. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, we haven't noticed, but if it gets awful for you, we may need to figure something out. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. So another thing to make things look cuter and uh, younger is a big forehead. And that works on everything. Hmm. And big eyes. So maybe I would do something like this. And the beak is so small compared to uh, to the body of the bird. I think I would emphasize that. That would be cute, right? Maybe a, a tiny, tiny little beak. So 
So maybe I would do something like this. Very cute. <laughs> and um, so birds, uh, apparently this bird has all black eyes, but it can be a little bit creepy. I would probably do a little, you know, mm -hmm. something like this for mine so that it looks a bit more, less creepy. Or maybe, maybe I would go just, you know, happy bird. Oh, yep. Completely just a <laughs> universal happy bird. Yes. So that's already pretty cute. <laughs> it is um, adorable. <laughs> for the for the details, now this guy looks very fluffy. I think that's very cute too. So I do want to translate some of that, but I don't want to get lost into details. So my my main concern here would be how do I translate the fluffiness with the bare minimum that I can. So maybe I would do like a little fluffy tail like this. That's definitely something I have a hard time with is expressing stuff like fluffiness and volume without going overboard with like little feathers yeah. and yeah. yeah. It's it's a difficult balance. This is, this is something that I, I learned more about when I was in animation. It's very important to simplify uh, when you're going to animate. And in my program, how they did this is everything that we animated, we had to design ourselves. You learn pretty quickly that, yes, if you want, you can make the complicated design, but do you want to sleep in the next two weeks? <laughs> mm, yeah, that's good advice. Sure. So quickly, quickly, you're like, okay, maybe she doesn't need 12 braids. Maybe I can do about the same effect with just five braids, and that will save, save me a lot of work. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there's a lot of examples like that in animation. Like for instance, um, Ursula from The Little Mermaid, uh, she's an octopus mermaid, but not really. She only has six tentacles instead of eight. And that's yeah. a very smart choice from the character designers because it probably saved them thousands and thousands of hours of work. And that translates to like millions of dollars and no one cares that she's missing two tentacles. So it definitely wasn't the right place to spend the budget. So it was a very smart choice. Oh, no, so, absolutely. Yeah. So whenever you're, you're thinking, okay, uh, how I can do this economically? <laughs> so maybe just a little... Mm. Yeah. There, there's an Aladdin character sheet where they show, like, the super basic shapes that all the characters are made of. Yeah. Like... Genie's like a weird comma. <laughs> mm -hmm. So maybe by doing just these three strokes, I could, uh, you know, express that this, uh, this little guy is fluffy. Or maybe I could do something like this, you know, a few of these. And of course here, uh, you can iterate as much as you want. And uh, even for the shapes, uh, maybe I would do another version Sometimes I have a very clear idea in my mind what I want to do, and sometimes I don't. So I can try different uh, versions, em emphasizing different things. So maybe for this one, you know, here I, I see like the head is a little flat. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of a a corner here. So maybe I would do. Uh, maybe I would emphasize that and do like a little corner. What about the feet? Yeah, I could do the feet, right? <laughs> I think the feet are the most annoying things, I think, to draw. Something I, think I love, yeah. Like tiny, tiny little, maybe even tinier than this. I think that would be cute. That would emphasize just how much, like, they're getting lost in the, the big fluffy body. Yeah. I think I could make him bigger, too. Right? I was just going to say, my favorite thing to do with birds is just not draw the feet. Like yeah. <laughs> their, their feet are in their body, just kind of disappeared in the feathers. It it works most of the time. Yeah. It, or just draw stick like feet. A, I could make him like a real chunky boy. Ooh, chunky boy. Very, very chunky. And I often do that. I start with a sketch and then I, I, I modify on the sketch. Like I, I, I take the lasso and I move stuff around directly from, uh, from my sketch. Maybe I want this to be closer. Mm or something. Maybe I could do the wing a bit separated. Or maybe I can make the wing smaller. 
So there, there's no right or wrong, but you can try different things, diff emphasizing different things, as long mm -hmm. as you know where you're going with it, like what, what's your goal. And like here, the, there's a shape like this too. So maybe I would, you know, maybe I would do like this instead. Okay. Something. So uh, usually how long, I'm just curious, how long do you think it usually takes you to fully explore a character like this? And like, how long do you usually take with this st stage? It, it really, really depends. Sometimes I, I know right off the bat what I want. Like I see, sometimes I, I see the, my reference photo and I think, oh, okay, I'm going to emphasize this and this. And immediately uh, I go for that. And sometimes I'm not sure exactly what I'm going for. So I'm going to try a lot of things. And honestly, when I know right away what I want, I don't tend to do 50 iterations. I know maybe I should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when I know what I want, I, usually I don't. But I actually had an example, right? So um, my first uh, children's book was that I had to do a little panda. And mm -hmm. these are the two that I was um, really hesitating between at the end. But I think I did like 30 of these. And this is a lot for me. Usually I maybe do like two or three before I really zoom in on what I want. But this one, I really didn't know. And I really like this, uh, this, I called it the panda bean. <laughs> I really like this, this bean shape. I thought it was very designy. Um, it, it was really like, focused on the design more than the, than the character. And I really liked that. I thought I was going to have a ton of fun, like playing with this shape, but for the book, since, you know, I had to do many different poses and expression. And I thought with the big head, it would be cuter and it would be more expressive. It would be easier to, to pose a character in different ways. So mm -hmm. that's why I ended up going with this one. You went with number two, sorry? Yeah, I ended up yeah, going that's what with, I thought. Uh, with number two, uh, just for the specific purposes of the book. But, you know, there was nothing wrong with the first one either. It really depends on circumstances. Absolutely. And I think I, I, I asked the, the forum for, for help too on this one. And you guys had really good. The, I remember I that. I can't remember which one I voted I for. I remember <laughs> that too. I remember that whole discussion. I had some really good uh, ideas uh, from you. Um, yeah. So uh, cool. do you have any questions? Yeah, Vanessa, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, when, you, when you draw the bird, do you think about which type of bird or do, do you... Do you consider things like that, like especially with bird and uh, flowers? I yeah, uh, yeah I was just it, curious. Mm. It, it's a very good question, and it really depends. Um, if the the focus of the illustration is the bird, and I want to do a specific type, then of course I want to show what species it is. So I'm gonna you know try to identify the defining features that I need to keep to identify that. But if it's just a bird in the background, and I just want to communicate that there's a bird there in the tree, but it doesn't really matter what it is, then I'm probably going to simplify it more and erase more defining features because it doesn't matter. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> That's clever. Hmm. So I'm curious, in this particular case, which defining feature do you think you would keep to make it so, this, this, so that this bird would be recognizable? Mm, I think I would probably modify the, the beak because I, I made it very small here. Mm -hmm. And I think the, oof, don't know what happened there. I think the, the, the small uh, pointy beak is the defining feature and the markings. I would emphasize, maybe that marking looks like a heart to me. Isn't that cute? Maybe it's very I cute. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that heart shape here. And uh, maybe the, the eye. So maybe I would do this instead to keep the, sh the, the eye shape and that pointy here. Yeah, that'd do it. I would make him a very chunky boy. <laughs> I'm going to have to use that daily from now on. Next time <laughs> I see my nephew, I'm just going to be like, you're a real chunky boy. He's like one, so he doesn't care. Uh, <laughs> uh, did I draw? Oh, yeah, I drew it on the same layer as the... Damn it. I do that all the time. I feel your pain. <laughs> So I would do something more like this to emphasize this, mm. that it's this kind of bird. I actually, I brought more photos Ooh, awesome. because this one was very easy, right? I remembered having a hard time with the toucan. 
Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. I drew a, a toucan before, and I had more trouble with this one because there's a, a, a very, like, it's subtle, the change between the body and the head. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to go full on to merge all of this together. Like, yeah. Know, you know, some, something like this with the... I'm going very fast, so it's not very precise, but so do something very, very stylized like this, which would be perfectly valid, but my main concern is making it cute, right? Yeah. So I, I wanted to make like a bigger head. So in the end, I ended up emphasizing the head more than it is in a real toucan. Okay. And I ended up doing something more like this and then a really like big uh, beak maybe a bit shorter but thicker and that's very cute <laughs> and like a big eye oh, like, oh yeah <laughs> the big eye and the eyelashes do help <laughs> yeah so and i think I, I made like a big pause like this too so yeah it, it really depends what you're trying to achieve and if you remember that when you make these decisions um it really helps guide your decisions and by this deciding what you uh, by emphasizing different things you have so many possibilities for different designs with the same uh photo mm -hmm. the same reference also i found this one which Ooh. i thought what an interesting shape right absolutely i would be so tempted to like follow this line Oops, maybe i'm gonna go a bit more transparent so you can see better <clears throat> i would be so tempted to jo just follow this this one line here that's that's my instinct with everything is to find that one line yeah that makes it, it wouldn't yeah. it, it wouldn't you know follow my my cute rule but how fun is that <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah absolutely of course, awesome. when you go with more complex, like humans and uh, even like a cat or any more complex things, the birds are fairly simple. That's why I chose them for this uh, exercise. But Interesting. The more complex you go, the more decisions you have to make. I find cats are very hard to draw. I hate cats. Sorry, I hate <laughs> drawing cats. I also hate cats, but yeah. <laughs> You could do something like this. It looks completely different from my style, but it's so fun. Ness, right. can I ask you? Can I ask when you're when you're making these designs? Do you take into consideration how easy it is going to be to then turn turn those designs in space? Good I mean, question. Does that, does that affect? It's your a very good question. There's so many things to consider uh, <laughs> at the same time. Uh, Usually the first time when I do that first drawing, I don't really think about it just because there's so many things to think about that you have to focus on something. Um, but afterwards, after I have my, my, first, uh, my first design, then I would draw another one from the front and from the other, I would draw all the other angle. And usually after you work a little bit, you can solve it. But of course, if I, I end up on uh, a design that I really like, but I can't solve an angle. Like this little guy may be difficult. Birds uh, in the front view are so difficult. Yeah. Like how do you do Oh, that? yeah. Maybe this, something like this maybe. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> if, the, if the design was a bit more complex to keep the features uh, of this bird, if it had the, I don't know, if it had some feathers i would have to solve how i do this um, in the in the front or in the back or whatever so it's still recognizable but i usually do this later and sometimes i will think okay this feature just can't, doesn't work so i'll change it instead and i'll do something like this and then i go back to my first drawing i'll change it so i, I go between uh, all the different angles and just adjust until i have something you know a full turnaround the, that i like if it is for a book, of course. If it's for a standalone mm -hmm. <laughs> illustration, sometimes I don't go through the trouble. Oh, yeah. Then who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but that's you a very said, good question. Sorry. You, you said that uh, humans are more challenging and cats 
and I agree with cats and humans, but I have trouble simplifying human, like, arms and legs. I'm getting mm -hmm. better with heads, but arms and legs, I don't know how to simplify those, let alone hands. <laughs> yeah, that, that is very, very complicated, um, especially hands. It's something that it really helps to, to start from a reference photo, because even if you want to end up with something really, really simple, um, the one important detail that you keep that makes it realistic, that makes it that people understand what pose it is, that's the one detail that you want it to be from, from reality, you know, from the truth. But then again, when you start with a real photo and you want to end up with, you know, something like this, something you get lost in the details <laughs> of, of the real photo and it's just, it gets harder to, to, to simplify it. But what really helped me was um, uh, copying a lot of other artists. And when I say copying, it's just not tracing their work, but uh, borrowing their style for a few mm. exercises. Yeah. And you get to learn how they solve it and what is comfortable for you. Like maybe all oh, this one artist, I don't really like how they draw hands at all, but this one draw them like this way and that feels comfortable to me and maybe you mix it with the way that another artist does that and uh, that, that really helped me to to find what features i wanted to keep because every artist solves the simplification puzzle uh, a different way Hello again! This is about the midway point of the showcase and I just wanted to pop in real quick to tell you a little bit about my Facebook group community. Engaging with other artists really great way to improve your art, exchange information and also it's just really fun to socialize with other like-minded people. I'm very lucky to have met some wonderful art friends online and having the opportunity to chat with them and do some fun things like these showcases is really amazing. I want to give you the same opportunity to meet with illustrators and engage with them. So I created our very own Facebook group community. I will leave the link to that in the description. Come join us and when you do, make a post with one of your recent illustrations and a few words about yourself so we can get to know you. I really hope we see you there. Now the second part of the showcase is the coloring part with Photoshop's vector tool. Let's continue. Okay, so the next step will be to decide on my colors. Oh, I deleted my my bird. I wanted to take some of the colors from it. Oh, wow. oh no. Okay, so I start with like a random color that I think works okay. But the thing with colors is that you don't want to get too attached to any one of them because they interact with each other so much. So as long as as soon as you introduce a second color, you have to adjust them so that it works with the second color. And then the third color, you have to adjust the first two. So I always keep very uh, flexible. And the way I do that is I, I do a very quick um, color test and I keep all my colors on different layers, even if I do it so quick like this. So then I can click cont uh, Control U to open the U saturation. Aha. Uh -huh. And I just modify my colors directly to adjust it to the, you know, to the second color. So maybe I do something like this. And then I'm gonna try to do that orange pattern, uh, the heart-shaped one that was on the bird. So I, I just, I pick something that I think looks okay at random, but I'm always gonna end up adjusting it because it's never okay. <laughs> <laughs> my yeah. first pick is, it's never, Oh, this actually isn't too bad. It's not bad. But maybe I would do it a little bit more vibrant, maybe a bit more yellow. Maybe something like this. Cute. So yeah, I use the, the control U. Uh, is that an adjustment layer? Sorry? Is that an adjustment layer or is it, uh, you're just on modifying it and then modifying it again and then modifying it again? Exactly. Um, each color, like the, this is on a separate layer, this mm. one is on a separate layer, and this one is on a separate layer. Uh, so I can just, I just go directly on the layer. Like this is uh, just my color mm -hmm. test. It's so quick. So I'm not married to any of this. It's a real good way of doing it. 
Yeah, the, the other, th like what I typically do with that is I'll, I'll use an adjustment layer instead, but I, I guess it doesn't really matter because you can always just switch it. Yeah, it's the, the adjustment layer, it does the same thing, but the adjustment layer is non-destructive. So you can always go back to your original. Here I'm going so fast that I really don't care about the original. I don't want to keep it, right. so I don't bother. But if you want to, if you do something like really good, like if you do the, uh, the grayscale technique where you have your underpainting in gray, that is all detailed, and you don't want to ruin that. You want to keep it original of that. Can I ask you again, what, what's an adjustment layer? I'm, um, I'm not getting it. So an adjustment layer, you click here on the, uh, like circle that's half black, half white, and uh -huh. you have uh, different effects. Uh, so the one I was using is hue saturation, but you can do color balance, you can do brightness, uh, okay. yeah. and, but, and it's separate. So it's, okay. it's a layer like this, and I can do exactly the same thing that I was doing earlier, changing the, um, the hue, the saturation, but I can remove it and I can adjust it, and I haven't destroyed anything that was already there. Thank I, you, I didn't know that. I I so awesome. <laughs> one, yeah, one thing with that, make sure that if you use it on the different layers, uh, make it a clipping mask yeah. so that it doesn't mess up the other stuff. Exactly, so if I put it on top, this affects everything that's underneath, but if I wanted it to be just uh, on this last one, then I, I can clip it. To this last one so now it just it just affects this one something that you could do that i do often is so let's say i'm, I'm done with this so then maybe i create an adjustment layer on top to uh to change uh, like maybe i want all of this to be lighter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so maybe i want to affect all of the colors at the same time to to keep the harmony that i work so hard for um but a lot of times what i do is i'm just gonna merge it because I'm, I, I do this so quickly that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe I suppose. Speak, uh, sorry, yeah. what? I suppose if you really wanted to and you wanted to keep one but keep exploring, you could just group them flat, like mm -hmm. copy paste and move it off There's to the side and keep to going. Do it. You, could, uh, yeah. you could make this into a group. And uh, yeah. Of course, you don't Thank want you very much. To sorry, what? Thank you. Uh, yeah, clipping masks are so great. They're very useful. And they are awesome. And are amazing. Especially once you, we get into the more finished look. Um, we don't want to be wasting our time by destroying what we're doing as we go if we change our minds. But I change my mind often. That's why I have the, the history here. Uh, instead of uh, Control Z, I don't, I don't want to depend on that. So I have my history here. If I want to go back nice. you know, from a, a long time, then uh, I can do that. And since I work in vector with every single thing on a different layer, I end up with a lot of layers. So that's why I have my layer panel here all the way mm -hmm. down. So I have space for all my layers. Right, so this wood, maybe I make it lighter because it's so similar to the bird or very dark. Oh, I like this. Yeah. Very, very dark. So it uh, contrasts and maybe the top here, but that's too light compared to the other. So I was, I, I adjust like this forever. And just keep on going until you're like, that's perfect. Yep. Yeah. And if I added a background, then I would probably have to change every single color because that would affect <laughs> everything. So usually if I have a background, I will start with that because it would affect all of the, the other colors. So yeah, uh, start with the, the main uh, masses and then work your way to the uh, details. Nice. I want this maybe a little bit more blue, maybe a bit lighter. Oh. Yeah, that's cute. I like this. Nice. Yeah, so I think I'm going to keep it really, really simple. So I'm just going to, yeah, it may be a bit sharper for contrast. Hmm. Yeah, I like this. So when I'm done, I just merge everything and I put it aside for a reference. Okay. 
and then I start my actual colors. Usually I create a, a folder called colors. So I don't, and then I just pick the colors and I start doing my vector. So this is the pen tool. This is what I used to, uh, cool. So let's continue. We're just uh, so fascinated. <laughs> right. So uh, I'm going to start tracing the, the body. I just made a bunch of, I just make a bunch of uh, points with the pen tool. I've really got to learn how to use the pen tool. Uh, I'm going to try to explain it. It's, it's really easy. Uh, so you can make a, a path like this with the, the pen. And now I'm, I'm pressing uh, control and clicking on this and dragging it. No. Okay, I have to select one thing, not the entire shape. Sorry. Control. And then I drag. No. Alt. There we go. Not control. Alt. I usually do this without really thinking about it. So um, I just trace my sketch by modifying these points and try to trace um, my shape as best as I can. <clears throat> Sometimes, because I really like the spontaneity of uh, like a quick sketch. So sometimes what I do is I sketch really, really quick. And then when I do this step of vector, I follow my crappy sketch to the T. Okay. So, so it has all of the, you know, it's cued a little bit and it's not perfect because the, the vector can look very perfect. So sometimes I, I just do a very, very quick sketch so that I can keep some of that spontaneity uh, when I trace a vector. Okay, so that's why you don't just start with vector and make shapes. Yeah, that Great. would be probably very, um, it would look cold. And yeah. Very straight and symmetrical. I think that's the problem a lot of people have when they start out and they're like, oh, I can just make shapes with the pen tool. Then look, it's perfect. And that's the problem <laughs> is yeah, that it, it can, looks perfect. It can work with graphic design. Sometimes like a, right now I'm, I'm designing a digital planner for my uh, online shop. Mm -hmm. And I just went straight, you know, with the shapes, but this is an illustration, it's not graphic design. So and after I'm done tracing my, sh my, uh, my path, I click here on shape and it transforms it into a shape. Awesome. It will take uh, automatically the um, properties that you have selected, it, the shape. So sometimes it will do something from your last project, maybe it will be a black outline or something and you're like, oh, I have to go back. So you can click on shape and then modify these. Here I already had no stroke and this was like the main color is selected, but you can change it here, change, you know, make whatever color you need. And so we're just gonna keep going. Mm -hmm. Do the little wing. Since this one here follows the, the body, so I'm just gonna create a clipping mask. So I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, so it's control when you want to drag it, and when you want to spread out, it's uh, alt. Alt. Yeah. Awesome. So when I when I draw, I always have my uh, my left hand on my uh, keyboard <clears throat> shortcut. I think I'm gonna drink. Need to drink some water at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the same way. I just slugged a cup of coffee, so I'm dried out. <laughs> Once again, we're held in rapt attention. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna do the shape here. Usually, I would sketch this shape. No, I, I haven't. So I'm just gonna kind of wing it. Okay. Uh, something like this. You can add as many points as you need to make this uh, this shape follow exactly your sketch. <clears throat> Awesome. Yeah, I guess after a, I guess just playing around with it after a little while, you get really good at knowing exactly where those curves need to go. Yeah. Um, I can, I can, I get pretty good now, but at the beginning, you know, we would spend a lot of time just adjusting those curves. Yeah. But you know, sometimes you, you come across something that's a little bit more complicated and you have a, <laughs> the, the worst is spirals, but I have gotten pretty good at spirals too. But, um, <clears throat> you know, 
you you have to really yeah it's not too bad okay yeah no it looks pretty good to me yeah but it can if it's really finicky to create something uh, really precise anyway it's hours of pleasure <laughs> hours of fun and when you want to close your uh, your shape you go back you will see a little circle i'm pointing my screen as if you can see <laughs> you will see a little circle and that means that uh, that's where you can close it and if you create another path uh, sometimes you will see a little link uh, thingy or if you if you lose your path you, you will see a little link that you can get back to to your path of course if you nice. right click you have more options uh, you can delete all that nonsense and start over uh, where are we okay branch Ness, do you do everything in vector uh, not always we'll see the the next step uh, we're gonna go off vector and we're gonna add some life to this and um, also sometimes uh, depending on the project but sometimes I just trace the shapes with a, a brush when I want a little bit more so like the pandas those pandas were in vector or were they uh, raster the in the book the final they were in vector uh, oh. but what I showed you was a it was a sketch so that was a just hand drawn but I did end up tracing those. And maybe I can show you. I still have all of this on my computer. I'm the same way. I never throw anything away. Mm. I got to do some digital housekeeping, though, at some point. No, it's not big enough. If I open one, my computer is going to freak out and take a million years to open it. <laughs> probably. But, oh, not too bad. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the shapes are a vector, but as you can see, I add some textures on top. Yeah. I like to break it up a little bit. All this stuff like this here, it's hand-drawn. Uh, all the little lines I hand-draw on top, I like the details in the, in the feather here, I hand-draw on top. And then I add some sort of watercolor texture uh, to this to make it just a little bit more livelier. Uh, I've always really liked watercolor, so... Uh, I make my own watercolor textures and I add them on top and I think that has a little something. Absolutely. Yeah, because the, the vector style is, um, it's very common and it can look a bit clinical. But I wanted to have something a little bit more unique. Um, so I added this and it was a bit difficult at the beginning to um, convince publisher that publisher that my work was uh, suitable for a picture books. Oh, they wanted okay. me, yeah, they wanted me for educational and they wanted me for website graphics, but they weren't sure about the picture book, if I would be suitable for that. So uh, I did the Panda book, which was with a, a local publisher that didn't pay very well. <laughs> but after I added that to my, um, my portfolios, now suddenly all the publishers were like, oh, you know what, I guess, mm -hmm. I guess it can work. Your style can probably work for picture books. No, I don't have any any trouble getting uh, picture books. Though I do more often um, younger audiences, uh, board mm -hmm. books. I do a lot of board books. Uh, which That's those I actually, oh, maybe I would do a little uh, brown beak. Wouldn't that be cute? Yeah, definitely fit with, the, uh, with some of the keywords. Hmm. Although this guy is so, he's so round that maybe I want a little bit of a, a pointy edge here to have some variety in the design. Right, that's the word I was looking for. Unity and variety. I just forget the words too, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so let's add some uh, line details. Okay, I have the layer here. So I use the brush Fontania, it's from Kyle Webster. And if you have Photoshop, you can get all these uh, cows, uh, brushes uh, for free. When I was in college, I actually, I bought all of these packs, uh, but now uh, uh, Adobe snatched him and now he works for them. So uh, it's all included. 
and he does the best brushes in the industry. So they I are like, pretty amazing. Yeah. For Photoshop, definitely he's the master. So this brush, I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Maybe if I delete my sketch. <laughs> yeah, nice little rough edge. Oh. It's a little bit transparent. It has a, a little bit of texture. And uh, I don't know. I like it. I think it adds a little bit of a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit of life. Yeah. On, on top of the, uh, the vector. Uh, since I, I work in vector, it's, it's sorely needed sometimes. Uh, okay. Maybe I would uh, do a few here and the in the orange part as well. So it looks like it's still part of the same texture. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Usually I do all of my lines on the same layer too. And oh, I, interesting. Yeah, it's just, it's easier for me because I end up with so many layers that if I were to look for the right one, Whew, that would take forever. Uh, so usually if, if I need to modify a color, then I just go on my lines layer and then I'm just going to lasso it and change the color. And it just helps me that it's all in the worst. Sometimes I can add a layer on top and clip it and then change the, change the color this way. It just, there's so many, there's so many ways to do it that I, I don't sweat it so much. Yeah. Do you ever do you ever do the um, use the I can't remember what it's called. Hold on. I think it's the move tool uh, to find your layer. Oh yeah, yeah. I do that sometimes. Yeah, like if anybody doesn't. Tool, yeah. That's it's so useful sometimes when you have a ton of layers and you're like, where the hell is it? <laughs> you can do auto select. And then if I click here, it's gonna go there. So if here this one. It wasn't in my folder for some reason. So if I were looking for it, especially since I'm going fast and I didn't name anything and I have shape one, shape two, shape three, shape four. Yeah. I could be looking forever. Like, which one is it? This is this one. No, it's not this one. It's not this one. I could be looking forever. So you can just do auto select and then you click on something. It tells you where it is. But most of the time I keep it unclicked because if I want to move stuff around, like if I wanted to move this, if this was auto selected and I wanted to move this and I were click, uh, it's not, it's not moving the thing that I want because it's selecting something that I don't want. Right. Uh, you can also just keep it unselected, unchecked, and then hold control and then click where you want and it'll, it should select that layer. Oh, magic. I did not know this. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, I had the same problem. Like it, I don't want to keep it on. Then, <laughs> like then if you hold control, I think on Mac it's command. Um, it'll it'll select that layer, then you can move it around. You you know I've been using this program for 15 years, and I still learn things every day. <laughs> uh, I think everybody only knows 10% of Photoshop. No one knows more than that. It's all the different 10%, but <laughs> it's only 10%. Did you know that um, Photoshop can do as the uh, animation capabilities? I haven't used it yet, but I've I I, I something I, I've got on my list. It sucks. It's not great animation, <laughs> but you know, when, uh, recently I, because I did study animation, but nowadays I do illustration mostly, but uh, one of my clients was like, hey, we need kind of this little animation, tiny, we see on your resume that you worked, like you did animation. Can you do that? And I'm not going to get a license for an animation program just to do this tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I cobbled it together with uh, with Photoshop. It's really not ideal, especially when you're used to a real program. But uh, it it can get the job done. I was really surprised to hear that Photoshop can do that. Does everything. It does everything. <laughs> most of uh, most of the techniques that I use today, uh, I learned after I left school. That makes sense, honestly enough. Yeah. So I, I thought I thought I knew Photoshop quite well, but nowadays everything that like the vector, I didn't know about vector until I was working in a studio. 
and I just opened a, a, a file that someone else had been working on and there were shapes everywhere. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here for the branch, I think I'm going to use a clipping mask instead of doing the lines on the same layer because I don't want to have to worry about it and I want to do this. You can have that nice organic feel of the, the, the grain. Yeah. That's awesome. Since uh, the, the, the base shape is so blocky, I feel the need to add a little bit of whimsy on top. And I'm going to reduce the opacity on this. Whimsy should really be a technical term. Like we should be able to say increase the whimsy by 10%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I didn't pick any um, uh, shadows for this. So I don't know if you can see, I'm just picking the color that I picked on the base and I'm just making it a bit darker. A bit darker uh, and more saturated? Darker and more saturated. <laughs> cool. You know it. And uh, afterwards, maybe that wouldn't be the, the, the right one. So I would select it and adjust it with my, my favorite technique of adjusting everything. That's a great way to do it. Uh, yeah, that's a nice way of keeping control without losing track of like all the adjustment layers working together, if you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I had everything on different layers and I wanted to change the color of these, actually, I might change the color of these. I don't think they're dark enough. But if I had them on different layers, I would have to find them. And that's the kind of time that I don't have. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna add a few lines in the tail here and then we're gonna get to the next stage. Okay, that's good enough. What do you guys Adorable. Think? Right, I think I'm gonna get rid of this now. Don't need it anymore. The last stage is adding some texture. Uh, shading. Uh, so I do this directly on the shape itself because I need the, the clipping mask. And I use this watercolor brush. It actually isn't one of Kyle's because Kyle has some watercolor brushes that lag like crazy on my computer. Uh, I can't remember where I got this one. Um, for almost every, I, I, I take uh, contracts with the uh, uh, studios sometimes, like mobile studios and stuff. And every different contract I work on, they send me a set of brushes to match their style. So I lose, track. I lose track of what I got where. Yeah. But this is a, a brush that I use all of the time. And uh, it just does this, uh, this little random. I'm going to show you on a separate layer what it does. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Right? No, that's beautiful. I really like it a lot and it doesn't lag. So that's the one I want because I work on an older computer and it, it cannot handle everything that I wanted to handle. Yeah, but I bet it's the texture that's doing it. I don't know. I think it's maybe some of the smoothing or blending. Well, I've noticed like Kyle's brushes um, have really, really huge texture files, mm -hmm. you know, like, 200 megabytes for the for the texture on wow. some really yeah that's insane like <laughs> i have this example in my mind because i exported this five minutes before the the showcase but mm -hmm. I, I just finished a digital planner it's 138 pages mm -hmm. and it's 30 megabytes right yeah <laughs> so this is just to put it in perspective this is enormous for a texture file no kidding yeah, I think like if you if you look at um, gosh, which class was it? It was uh, I think it was the brush class by uh, Lee White. Um, the the file he's got in there is even pretty big. Mm. I would assume that the base is very big, and that can be useful because if you want to make it bigger, um, if you want to make it really really big, uh, like a thousand pixel, this canvas here I kept really small like if you look here a hundred percent like this is it I, I didn't want to make a too big file because I was afraid it was going to lag on the share <laughs> yeah so usually I work bigger and sometimes I want this brush to be a, a thousand or fifteen hundred pixels large and uh, sometimes it looks pixelated 
uh, Cal's brushes usually don't. They scale pretty mm -hmm. well. Maybe that's why they're. Um, yeah, th I think that's exactly yeah. the re the that source file is so gigantic, mm -hmm. so that at almost at any size, it's not going to look grainy. Yeah, so it has its uses, but if it lags, I'm not going to use it. And I think that's true for most people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There's only so much bullshit you can take. Yeah, unless it's like one or two strokes only at the end, and you can just let your computer kind of sit there and render for a few moments. But yeah, for workflow? Adding, yeah, so I'm just adding some, uh, some textures here, and I, I modify the colors on the textures themselves. Uh, a lot of the times, I will find that after I, use, I add the, the shading with the texture that I don't see uh, my details enough anymore so sometimes i will go out to some of them and make them darker it's a perpetual process of adding one thing that creates a need to modify something somewhere else etc cetera, etc cetera. <laughs> and uh, okay here um, okay i'm going to show you something interesting here uh, this shape the orange shape mm -hmm. is clipped uh, onto the the body shape so if i wanted to um clip something else on the orange shape i couldn't do that but i want to uh to add some orange texture only here so what i would do is create a new layer right above and do my thing oh, and then i would i would uh press control and you see i'm hovering here and you can see like a little box yeah. Click here, it's going to select the layer. Ah. And then I go back to this layer where I shaded, and I'm pressing on this icon to add a layer mask. Awesome. So it cuts with the, the shape um, of this shape. The shape of this shape. I'm so eloquent. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how, that's how I would do it. And I'm going to do the same thing for the little wing here. I think I'm going to do a little bit of... Uh, is it showing? Yeah, it's lagging, but it's showing. And do a little bit lighter, and then click, click. It's two clicks. It's so magic. It That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And over oh, so here, so fast. Yeah, it, it it my my um technique is pretty fast. Um, I I would say that is intentional because I am a little bit lazy. Uh, efficient. <laughs> Maybe efficient, but you know there was a there was a choice involved to have this simple style. I used to do like semi realism stuff, and I wouldn't do that anymore, uh, specifically because it takes too much time, and I'm too lazy to do it anymore. I'm really losing my voice. I'm sorry, guys. It is all good. Talking for an hour takes its toll, <clears throat> and you've been like you've been talking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank like, you. No, not, not, not in the bad way. I mean, like, there's been no questions because we've all been just so interested in what's going on. And so you've been filling all the empty space. <laughs> Usually there's more questions. Yeah, if there's more questions, you know, don't, don't hesitate. Uh, I hope I'm not just talking so much that you don't, you don't feel like you can... Uh, no, no, no. We're just fascinated. <laughs> I am certain that we're just fascinated. Okay, so I'm almost done here. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And uh, okay, the last step is uh, a watercolor texture. Uh, where is it? Textures. I have some that I made myself, and some that I don't know that that are free or that I bought. I really like this one, which I bought um, on Deviant Art for points. Nice. Oh, Deviant Art years ago and i still use it oh wow this is a small canvas guys <laughs> that is a tiny canvas <laughs> oh nice so i yeah. really like this this texture has many different colors in it because then i would clip it on my since i put everything in a handy dandy folder called colors and it just clips everything that's mm -hmm. that's how you know when a shape works when you could just take that and put it on a t-shirt and, it and it'd be fine. You know, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't even look at Beautiful. it, but it's, it's pretty, it's pretty graphic design, isn't it? It, it is. Yeah, no, it pops right out. 
So I would do, but the, the photo was, uh, was amazing. So I would do overlay and around 40%. And uh, I really like how since this texture has some blue and some red and some little spots, it just brings out a whole lot of tones that weren't there. Yeah, it's beautiful. And I will just, uh, sometimes I will turn it around, see how it looks from, but see here I had some, in the top here, I had some, uh, some light. So I, I don't want to cover that up and like negate my own lighting. Mm -hmm. with the texture so we'll probably do it like this and then I'm thinking that I don't see my light too much anymore so I would go back again every time you add something you have to go back and I would make this more light so it pops more and I'm thinking maybe this texture is a bit much maybe 30% so that's a uh, oh no, I'm seeing something else now. All these, the little things at the end. Yeah, these are affected by the, the blue here and they faded. Ah, okay. So I would go back and make them a little darker. Oh, okay, yeah. Maybe these a bit lighter because we can't see them anymore. If I couldn't make them light enough, I think I can. Yeah, I can. But if I couldn't make them light enough to pop, then I would just go the other way and make them dark. Mm. Yeah. My, my little detail, sometimes I make it darker, sometimes I make it lighter. Either way works. Awesome. So that's my style. That's that my was way. amazing. Was it? That was yeah. Amazing. Definitely. Any Thank questions? You for showing. Yeah, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I'm wondering uh, why are you doing vector uh, with um, big shapes? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, because I, I see the, my process is fairly similar on adding textures. And, and uh, I start with a shape. I just draw a shape with brushes. And I use that as a base. And then yeah, add the layers. On top with, uh, yeah. that's, how I, that's how I used to do it. But then, like yeah. I said, uh, when I started in the, uh, the studio, uh, people were using shapes. And uh, I started using them because when I had to work in their files, I wanted to follow mm -hmm. their method so that it wouldn't go all uh, yeah. yeah, fair enough. And I just, I guess I really like this method. It's faster for me. Like, you see how fast I did this? If I yeah. do it with a brush, it would take me longer. And I kind of, I don't know, I like the look. Um, when you drive with a, with a brush like you do, Shane, it's, it's softer. And that's beautiful. Like your style is so beautiful. But for me personally, I like the, the contrast of yeah. the clean cut shape and my texture on top. I think it's, it's kind of unique and I, I ended up liking it. So I kept it. Mm. Yeah. It's got a very yeah. signature look yeah. to it. Yeah. And it's fast, which is a yeah. big plus for me. <laughs> but uh. yeah, I, I spent a long time in, uh, uh, in college, just really not liking my style at all and wanting to change it, but not being sure how. And yeah. in the end, I had, a, I had a class where the teacher would tell us how to copy others' style. It's really mm -hmm. important in animation because when you're on a production, you want your style to look like everyone else's. You want to look yeah. like, mm -hmm. like one person made point. projects. So this class, we had to pick a property, whatever it was, uh, let's say Kim Possible. And we had to draft fan, fan characters of Kim Possible that looked like they could pass as a real character in the show and copy the style as much as possible. And we nice. did this all semester. So I got to try like 20 different styles. And that's when I like expanded my um, gallery, my mental gallery of like different ways that you can simplify. And I started picking from there and continuing this exercise uh, in my personal life until I found the style that I, that I really liked. See, awesome. My problem is that I, I like too many styles. I try, <laughs> I want to try everything. That, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like my style. I, I look at Christian Robinson's track. Oh, tomorrow I'll sit down and do paper collage. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, that, that, is, that is a problem. Especially, like, there was a point I, um, when I started working in a studio, I, I hadn't developed this style yet. 
And for a long time, I didn't do any personal illustration because I was just working in the studio all day and relaxing when I was at home. Um, so it was a few years later that I developed this style, but I was basically a copycat artist for three years. And I would just see all these beautiful things. I was like, that's beautiful. I could do something like this. Oh, well, that's completely different. It's beautiful. I could do something like this and just completely lost. It's why, what should I do? Which mm -hmm. style should be mine? <laughs> it's tough. It really is. Yeah. It's a conundrum. There's so many different beautiful ways that you could do it, but it is very important when you have a portfolio to do yeah. Style. So I, I'm sometimes I wonder if this is really a personality issue rather than uh, like the one style multi style question. Like I I almost giving up or settling down with one style because I just think it's not possible for me. <laughs> I think I think everyone has that problem sooner or later. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's something I hear about from everybody. Like yeah. finding your own style is difficult for everybody. Almost no one sits down and says, yeah, this is what I want to do. Yeah. This is perfect. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. It changes too. I mean, over time. Oh, so. yeah, absolutely. And that's something, it's very scary when you, when you develop your style. It's so scary because you think, I have to pick one style and then that's it. I'm stuck with it for the rest of my life, so I better like it. But <laughs> it's not like that. I can't it's ever all. change it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I think we can actually call it there. If you're if you're all done, that was fantastic. Thank you so 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 much. You gave me a lot to think about. <laughs> I hope it was helpful. Thanks yeah. for coming. Very helpful. Thank you and, very much. Yeah, and next week we have uh, Shin, right? Yeah. And you'll be discussing, telling us some um, uh, about your first publishing job. Yeah, I just walked through my process of how to communicate with the with the editor. Great. Cool. So, so everybody. Doing, yeah, I won't ahead. be doing the drawing demo, but I'll go through like I. I just gather all the information in the presentation, just go through what happened yeah. from the moment so, she contacted me and towards the end of the job. Awesome. So everybody bring your questions. Okay. Think about what yeah. you want to ask. That sounds amazing. Right. I'll be there yeah. for sure. Cool. Thank all you right. so much. Thank yeah. you so much, everyone. Thanks, guys. I'll yeah. see you later. Bye. Have a nice day. You Bye. too. Bye. Bye. So that's the end of the showcase. I really hope that you found it useful and interesting. I would really love to hear in the comments what is your own illustration process and what are the tools that you like to use. Do you use Photoshop like me or another app or do you work traditionally? Go in the comments and let me know, I'm really curious. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to help our small channel grow. Thank you so so much for your support, I really appreciate it. And if you made it to the end of this video, thank you for being here and for watching. I will see you in next week's video. Bye-bye!